Hello, good afternoon. This is Enrique Sanchez. I am the founder and director of Hispanic Lives Matter, HLM. And right now I am online with my guest by the name of uh, Frederick Shaw Jr. Could you please introduce yourself and tell and explain what, what, you, what, you, what you are about, your organization is about. Yeah, I'm uh, Reverend Frederick Shaw Jr. I am the Director of Public Affairs and the International Spokesperson for a group called the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. We expose psychiatric abuses. We're a watchdog group that actually protects people from some of the harm or effects of uh, electroshock therapy and the mass drugging of people with psychotropic drugs that cause uh, very uh, dangerous side effects. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, like one one of the biggest problems that is that's that's affecting right now our society is mental health, and especially now with the uh, coronavirus pandemic, uh, mental health is actually going to be something that's going to be more addressed because right now people are are under stress. We are being affected by unemployment issues of the economy. And especially uh, people of color, um, Hispanics and African Americans are most affected by by mental health. And unfortunately, a lot of um, people within those two communities will be considered uh, vulnerable. So a lot of them are not able to have access to resources to mental health. And unfortunately, that causes a lot of uh, people to act out and then that's where the police get involved and, and the police, unfortunately, not all of them are not trained when it comes to mental health disturbances. And this is the reason why we have so many cases of police brutality. And then you have a lot of uh, people that are mentally ill or unstable that are being locked up in mass, mass incarceration in different prisons and they don't get treatment while they're in prison. So they actually get get worse. So, so tell me, Dr. Shaw, what do you think can be done to better the mental health of the Hispanic and African American um, communities? Well, uh, first of all, I believe that we have to address the issues that actually cause the condition uh, that is causing people to go through the emotional stress that they're going through. Uh, one of the things I want to caution people on is this idea that COVID-19 is producing mental illness. Actually, what it's producing is the normal emotional reaction for the situation that we're facing. And because it's, a, uh, it's not what we desire, we call it mental illness. If a person can't feed their family, if a person is going through difficulties and looking in the eyes of his wife, knowing that he can't produce, that causes a depressed tight state, but it doesn't mean that he's mentally ill. It just means that we have to help him resolve the issue that is causing him to feel low self-esteem and these other things. So I, I would like, I would caution us to be careful on just taking what they say is the problem because they make money on it. So in the black and brown communities where you have so many people and family members that work through things and stick together, they're pushing this idea of, you know, the uh, stigma of mental health and, and things like that, when it's just really the fact that all we have to do is help people work through their problems, and it does not lie with drugs that cause suicide and homicide, nor electric shock that destroys millions of brain cells when it's being administered. If you said put him on the couch, help him figure it out, tell him solutions, how to cope, I'm totally with that because I'm not against mental health. I'm more against what we call psychiatric abuse. Okay, so how would you the how would you differentiate between psychiatric abuse and regular mental health, which is regular protocol? Well, I would say mental health helps the person actually be able to cope with life in a better state, uh, address issues in a way that it enhances their ability to survive. But what we don't have in this country is actually mental health. What we have is a slick way of saying mental control. If a kid is having problems, 
we don't give him a drug that causes him to think faster, his IQ to rise, uh, to think clearer. We give him a drug to control his behavior, to slow him down. And I, I say that's control. I don't think that's health. Oh, abs absolutely. Um, I remember a couple of years ago when I visited the uh, museum on, on the commission on uh, the Citizens Commission on Council of Human Rights. Uh, unfortunately, what well, psychiatry in, in the United States today, which always been since the beginning of time, is that and they, they produce medication, different types of drugs, but they don't address the problem it's they're just covering up the symptom so it's like we can't just max the symptom without having to do with the problem it's like it's i remember a rabbi said a couple of years ago that said um a cancer starts out as a as a tumor if you don't deal with the tumor right away that tumor will, will metastasize and become cancer and spread throughout the body and unfortunately this is what's happening with mental health today that especially in w within the black and brown communities, there are many uh, root problems, uh, domestic violence, sexual abuse, uh, discrimination, extreme poverty. Uh, these, are, these are core issues that affect the people of, of color. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't have resources to deal with those problems. And they feel that by medicating all, all of these kids and all of these people, that is going to resolve the problem, actually is going to make it worse. And I really Amen. believe that there needs to be some alternative because this is why we have the opiate crisis that we're going through right now is because everyone is addicted to some type of drug. Let it be a painkiller, let it be medication, or let it be a mixture of, of the two. Exactly. And, 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 and let me say this, if you take a person who has a bad back that's in severe pain and you give them a drug to help with that pain, as soon as that drug wears off, that pain is back because you have not dealt with the disc that's out of place or the nerve that's causing the problem. So you're absolutely right in your assessment of this. And that's what I'm trying to say is, look, mother dies and we pretty much all have a depressed like feeling. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I had this little depression, you gave me a drug, and now I start hearing voices. Then you give me another drug to deal with the voices, and now I'm thinking of committing suicide. Then you give me a drug for the suicide that has suicidal warning labels on it, and then when I kill myself, you say, oh, mental health is real. problems are real. Well, if the drugs are creating this, and I tell people when I debate, and psychiatrists and stuff, don't even believe me, just listen to the commercials. They will tell you that these <laughs> drugs can cause suicide and, 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 and other issues. So how is that improving the condition is actually people making a lot of money on the misery of other people. I remember the days when you had a problem, you had to go get on the psychiatric couch. He would sit there, talk to you. He would help you deal with this issue. But once we got these drugs, it became quick fix. And so now a psychiatrist can see you for 10 to 15 minutes. I know because when I went out stress on a job, he said, what happened? I gave him a three to four minute uh, talk about what happened to me. And then he just said, automatically said, I can prescribe you two drugs. Mm -hmm. It's like, so the thing is, he didn't know what I knew because I've been working with the Citizens Commission on Human Rights uh, for 30 years. He didn't know I knew what I knew. But, and then he went to this when I said, well, don't you have something that can help me cope with the stress? And he, oh, you have something against the medication? Very intimidating, like, oh, I might not sign your papers if you don't take it. Right now, people going for general relief or being told they cannot get services if they don't go get med uh, medicine from mental health. Insurance companies now are telling you you got to be on psychiatric drugs for them to uh, uh, pay your bills if you're in addiction program. This is all an attack on the people, and it is backing mental health, and it doesn't help us like that. You know, and, and, and so when the system gangs up on the people, that's how we got this country started because the religion and the government join forces against the people. We're seeing the government and mental health 
joining forces against the people right now. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And unfortunately, when everything became corporate, like back in the 1970s, that's when everything started to go downhill. And when Ronald Reagan became president, um, he created a lot of the mental health crisis and not to bring up politics or whatever, but I'm almost, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. And I remember, mm -hmm. I, I remember when I was little, I've always been living in California most of my life. I didn't see so many homeless people, but after Ronald Reagan left office, I saw, I started to see so many homeless people and homeless people like with severe mental illnesses. And, and then I found out later on that the reason why we have to search mental illnesses, not only in the state of California, but also nationwide, is because Reagan came up with the idea, okay, I'm going to save the psychiatric um, hospital's money by closing all of the facilities, throwing everybody out on the street, you know, putting them in, in hotels maybe for about a week or two weeks tops with no, with no, with no medication or any type of psychiatric or mental health uh, treatment. So when these people um, don't get any type of treatment, they get worse. And then when they get worse, they act out, they commit some types, some type of criminal crimes. And then you see this mass incarceration. So it's like, we need to address that mental health is not just a social issue, it's a national security issue. Well, and I could agree with that. But the one thing I do want to say about Ronald Reagan is that was done like in the late 60s, early 70s. So you're looking at something that occurred 50 years ago. The majority of those people are no longer even here. So the crisis that we're looking at today with the homeless population, which has exploded in the last 20 years or so, uh, is created by the industry itself. Mm -hmm. um, because people are being put on drugs that are mind altering. Look, this is what their documentation say. It's mind altering. So people are actually becoming victims of mental health because of the fact that these drugs are so dangerous and they create these different side effects like delusions and, and, and psychosis and things like this. And I'm, this is nothing that can't be uh, researched and proven. So, and then even more dangerous is this electric shock therapy mm -hmm. where they're doing it on children from zero to five years of age and pregnant women causing miscarriages. Mm -hmm. How is this supposed to help the children? And how is it going to help the fetus if you give it to the mother before the child is even born? Exactly. This is, exactly correct. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So this is up to 460 volts going through the mind of somebody. Your electric shock it at home is like 120. So you're talking about four times that power, which is industrial type power, going through the brains of children who are not even developed and killing millions of brain cells, which would in children develop other millions of brain cells. And we wonder why these kids don't recover from it, that they oh, have wow. problems the rest of their life. So this is far deeper than just helping, because you know, one of the things that we find that happens is that groups that will suppress you always come in the name of help. Mm -hmm. Because if they came in anything else, you would spot them. So mm -hmm. they came in the name of help. They want to help you. They want to help free you from mental illness. And at the same time, they are creating the mental illness. They get paid. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me even show you something different. Sure, go ahead. What, there has been, for the last 20 years, a training that is, and I'm an ex-law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. but for the last 20 years, there's been a training being done all over this nation called Killology. Okay. Now, Killology teaches you to kill without hesitation, without guilt. It teaches you the communities you serve. You are at war with it. This is being. This was taught in LAPD. This was taught in the Highway Patrol. I have not confirmed that it was taught to the LA County Sheriff Department. But this, these people been doing it. And who is the head of this? A guy who was a psychologist, a professor of psychology out of West Point teaching this. And we're wondering why we're having all this violence in the street that has caused the protests and stuff. Look, mm, our children, yeah, exactly. Our children, the schools get paid more 
if a kid is labeled with a mental disorder. So really? if the school gets paid more, then there's no, it's logical that they're not being taught to read, especially in the black and brown communities. I was so, not aware of that. There, there is so, the rabbit hole goes so deep that it is frightening when you look at it. I mean, if we don't understand the mindset of America right now, when we can take an innocent child, two years old, and electric shock them or give them Prozac, we need to reevaluate that whole system. And they cannot be considered experts in the field of mental health if you don't know what the damage your field is doing. I mean, one million people got lobotomies before they outlawed it. And they didn't outlaw it, even though they knew 25% of the patients ended up in a vegetated state. They didn't stop it because of that. They stopped it because just too many people had died. Wow. So, so mental health can't even evaluate itself. And by the way, just so you would know, none of this stuff has been proven by science. They call themselves a science. They say that the drugs, most of them haven't even been, electric shock for sure, have not even been approved by the FDA. They now grandfathering it in when they never submitted the test results that showed that electric shock was, was effective. They've never done it, but they're and, doing it all over the nation. And you want to know what's interesting, those types of uh, methods of, of handling psychiat psychiatric uh, situations like you just mentioned, a lot of those are banned in, in most of the world. America's the only country in the world that still practices those types of uh, those types of methods because they just don't work. Like for example, if, if you look at Europe, like many of the Nordic countries, that's been banned for more than more than a hundred years. Well see, and, 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 and that should tell you something, but the reason that it's here is because so much money is being made uh, the American Psychiatric Association and the pharmaceutical companies can lobby our politicians. They get it in in the name of health. They promote it widely. And they are even promoting right now that the twitches and the uncontrolled involuntary muscle uh, uh, ticks and spasms we see and, and the mouths all distorted. Now they're pro promoting in commercials that the drugs cause that, but that is normal. Really? Wow. Exactly. I saw one two weeks ago on TV. I don't, I, and the thing that gets me is that I don't know how people, knowing that these uh, drugs have side effects, why they even take them? Are, are they like conditioned that, like you said, that they're normal, or maybe they missed that fine print, hey, that this could uh, cause this effect, or it could even kill you? Well, what, what happens is we're, we're conditioned in this country to believe authority. Right. I mean, whatever our, whatever our accountant tell us, whatever our school teacher tell us, whatever our lawyer tell us, we tend to go with it. So if our mental health therapy, therapist is saying it, if we see it promoted widely in print, if we see it on every commercial, just watch a movie and see if you can get through it without a mental health commercial. Just watch a movie. Actually, watch a 30-minute television series and, and see if you can get through it without, uh, you know, being hit with a commercial or more during the time period of that. See, one of the things that we have not recognized is that when we say tell a vision, we are being told a vision and they do it through, what do they say? Programming. They give us the words right there. They tell us a vision through programming, and we watch that television. Most of us watch at least three to four hours of TV a day. Mm -hmm. So we're just being bombarded with this as the truth. Mm -hmm. When it actually, they cannot, look, I've debated psychiatrists from Morehouse University to UC Irvine, Harvard professors, and they have never beat me. And that's not my field. Mm -hmm. So how can I beat professors from Harvard 
Because you know why? Because I know tricks because I grew up in the street. And I asked them, what could be wrong with a child that we would sentence him to death? Because they know these drugs can cause sudden death, they could cause suicide, and they can cause homicide. So when we look at Columbine and you investigate, you find at least one of those kids were on psychiatric drugs. You look at the Colorado theater shooting, the person was on those drugs. You look at Las Vegas shooting, the person was on those drugs. I mean, it's on and on and on, but in the interest of making a lot of money, they do that. Even the chemical imbalance of the brain theory has been denounced by some of the top psychiatrists in the world, but it makes so much money, they keep stating it. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. It has, everything has to do with profit. And people don't realize that when people are greedy and try to maximize profit, there are consequences of that greed. And this is what's happening right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe with these riots, like as with anything, they are the, they are the symptom of something bigger but something needs to be done to reform uh, the psychiatric system and especially mental health with, uh, with minorities because uh, Hispan Hispanics and African-Americans are being very much affected. Uh, the living standards now, especially with this COVID uh, pandemic are getting worse because most people of color are essential workers. They don't have the privilege like Caucasian and, and uh, Asians that they could you know work and work from from home so they are more more exposed to uh, getting getting infected and when and when when the bread bread winner gets infected a lot you have a lot of people that are generational housing that they live all in, in one roof so when one person gets infected the other one cannot uh, social distance and then everybody else gets infected and that's the reason why you're seeing a lot of Hispanic and black people that are that are dying more than everybody else. So some so something needs to be done. Like what my organization does, um, I started it uh, four months ago um, because of the shooting death of Andres Garado. I'm not sure if you are familiar with who he is. No. Mm -mm. Uh, he was he was a 17 year old uh, Salvadorian American uh, security guard that was murdered. Oh by the police in Gardena. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. I, I saw it on the news and followed it a little bit. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. So mm -hmm. the reason why I started this movement is because I'm trying to get minority protection for Hispanic people, which right now we don't have on, on the books because Hispanics are the largest minority in the country. We represent 18% of the population, but we have the largest poverty rate, the largest on representation, not only in government and, and also when it comes to economic activity. We are part of economic activity, but we are not partaking of the benefits. And because, again, not to bring up politics, because of the, of the GOP, uh, a lot of people feel that it is okay to terrorize and abuse Hispanic people. So it's like Hispanics have become like, like a public enemy number one right now. Okay. Well, and you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, go, go, go ahead. Ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Please finish your point. Sure. Thank you. So I would like to see uh, what can, what can be done that we could um, get resources to bring into Hispanic uh, communities, you know, when it comes to mental health, when it comes to seeking help that they need. Well, I think what happens is the black and brown have to join forces and demand from the politician those things that make life better for us. You are absolutely right in your assessment that when people can't pay their bills, when they're facing poverty and all of this, you're going to have more stress factors than other people. So what we need to do 
is make sure instead of spending the billions we do right here in LA County on mental health, what if those were in vocational training programs? Mm -hmm. What if those were in tutoring programs? Mm -hmm. What was up? What if those were for programs that had black and Hispanic kids playing pop Warner football and, and all of those type of sports together so they could learn each other and know each other. And because one of the things that you don't see is a lot of violence among people who have played sports together, who have done a lot of different things together. So we need to reassess because right now, with all of this protest about police abuse and everything, what did they say? Oh, we're going to take $100 million from LAPD. But did they put it in the black and brown community? No, they're talking about putting it in mental health. So again, we're underserved, we don't get what we need, and then they want to put, let's say they put mental health experts in the cars with the police and they shoot a black or brown person. Mm. Then all it is is the mental health says, oh, well, um, uh, yeah, the officer was right in shooting this guy if he was or not. And then there's no lawsuit. There's no, uh, you know, the, the family can't get anything out of it. These are the games that they play on us that we don't even know is being played. Mm -hmm. And so then we, we, we continue to find ourselves back in the same situation we were in in the first place. And I'm telling you right now, if we address the issues, if children are hungry, we give them a sound. Do you know in South Africa, I was talking, I led a protest out there. I was talking to one of the kings and he said kids were being labeled with attention deficit disorder. And the only thing wrong with them was they hadn't had enough sleep and were hungry. And they were given a medication before they would give them a sandwich. That's, that's, See, that's horrible. See, these are the things that are going on behind the scene, but we have trust in our government. We have trust in our leaders. So the money that's being made, we never question why a person can make, let's say, let's say a politician makes 250,000 a year and they live in million dollar houses. How, we, we never asked ourselves how this is possible. It's called lobbying. Hmm. <laughs> that's, La, that's lo lobby lobbying is, is the biggest, biggest threat to to, to the American people, and a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, another thing I was going to mention um, is uh, the Asian community, Asian American community. Have you noticed that the Asian American community doesn't have any type of social problems? Like, I go back and forth to the San Gabriel Valley. You probably are familiar with that area. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, all that area is predominantly Chinese. But the thing that I noticed with within those areas of Arcadia, Temple City, San Marino, is that they have a lot of social services for their own people. They have, like like you mentioned, they have like after school programs, language courses, and everything. But it, it's all paid for by the people. It's like they don't really they don't really get any type of government funding. So I think that is something that I think uh, we should borrow because that has definitely been very successful. And that's the reason why you don't see um, Asians having outbursts of mental health program, uh, mental health uh, breakdowns or crime in that area. Like in that area of, of, uh, of San Gabriel Valley, it's like one of the safest areas in the entire country, which I, like, I'm surprised. It baffles me. Well, actually they are doing the same thing as our Jewish brothers. And I, and I say Jewish brothers, Hispanic brothers, because we all should be brothers. We're all part of the human race. Right. And there's a different level of responsibility when you take care of your own community. Mm -hmm. um, some communities have their own justice systems. You know, it's, it's <laughs> some, some religions have their own justice systems. It's mm -hmm. like you have to kind of step away from this norm and create your own society, which benefits your community and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that and the more you can unify with other communities and we govern ourselves but not in the sense that you can't call the police or the police are the enemy or no no in the sense that we handle our children we raise our children you don't get uh asian uh people too much in mental health because their parents are parenting them 
Mm. See, you don't get that in the Jewish community. Their parents are parenting them. Their parents aren't being their friends. They haven't bought into this new thing. They're, they're parents. And then you become, you become new friends, you know, as, as you get older, then you and your children become friends. But in the beginning, you are parents to them. And that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think one of the biggest problems that I see in the uh, Hispanic black community is that there is a lack of uh, responsibility. I, I, fe I feel that a lot of the children that are being brought up today are being brought up by people that are also kids themselves. They don't have the life experience. And unfortunately, I just see that a lot of these children they get abused, uh, they get mistreated. And then when they are out into society, unfortunately, like I even seen it within the school system, it's like the teachers are already preconditioned that these children are going, are going to fail. It's like, even if you have uh, Hispanic and African-American students that are gifted, that are educated, that want to succeed, um, the teachers, they treat, this, they treat them like they're not gonna amount to anything. And unfortunately, you see a lot of uh, Hispanic and black uh, students that are failing is because the teachers are failing the students. It's like I've said this in many speeches before that the teachers and the parents have to work together. It's not the parents' job to educate the children while they are in school. And the same way, it's not the teacher's job to make sure that, that their kids, that the kids do the homework when they get home. And, and then you have right. both parties that put the blame on each other instead of working with each other. Right, right. And, and, and like I said earlier, don't forget, the schools get more money when the kids are failing and when they have mental health issues or can be labeled that. Because I owned group homes for boys and I was dealing with probation kids. And I took the kids that other people didn't like. And I turned out NFL football player, professional bodyguards, people who were contributing, supervisors of electrician work jobs and, and all of this. And all we did was teach them self-respect. We taught them martial arts so they could break away from the gangs. Mm -hmm. And we taught them how to study. And that's what changed their lives. Mm -hmm. and, and when you go to our schools, there's not even a dictionary in the classroom. So how are children supposed to, to, to learn when the most important thing in study is understanding words? Exactly. And you don't even need the dictionaries to look them up. Exactly. So, you know, so there's gonna have to be a major reform going on. There has to be a movement, just like we saw all of these people walking with Black Lives Movement and stuff. Those people have to become where they are fighting for education. Mm -hmm. They are fighting for, economic parity they are fighting for those things you know and i mean i know people with households making 150,000 a year that can't get a loan because oh the person has a business so they don't have paychecks every day so they have to show their w9 but it's the one that actually has the job in the house this is foolishness mm -hmm. and especially is done in the black and hispanic community mm -hmm. And that, and, that is, and that is something that my movement is doing is that I, my movement is primarily uh, to advocate education, uh, to, add, to advocate um, adapting different methods that other communities that I've mentioned, like the Asians, the Jews, the Arabs that have been, been successful and to adapt it uh, to our own community. You know, it doesn't mean that we're going to assimilate into their culture, no. But there's something that needs to change that the things of the past that, that, have, that we used to do haven't worked. And that's one of the reasons why criminal gangs have existed because when, when those movements started, they started out as, a, as a legitimate groups, but then when those leaders either end up dead or incarcerated, there's no leadership. And then these criminal gangs um, uh, take over and they fill up the uh, power vacuum. And I think that what's essential for the communities is that there needs to be uh, community building. Like you said, there needs, there needs to be av advocation for education. There needs to be um, infrastructure improvement. There needs to be um, 
um, funding that needs to provide a sort of a safety net at the same time, giving the, the methods and the skills in order for people to become self-sufficient because contrary to what a lot of conservatives and Republicans like to say, uh, most people, if they had the means to go to school, they would go to school. If they had the means to have some type of vocational training to get a better job, they would do it. The reason why a lot of people don't go to college or they do not get vocational training is because it is too expensive. They cannot afford it. So a lot mm -hmm. of people are forced to either work in a dead end job, working minimum wage. And unfortunately, in the case of many uh, youngsters, uh, joining a gang is, is an excellent career, career choice. And that's something that needs to stop because if it doesn't stop, uh, people are going to continue to stereotype brown and black people as being bad people. And, and the good people that are Hispanic and black that are educated, that are decent and want to be proper, um, they're, going, they're always going to be stigmatized. Exactly. And, and so those are the things that we have. To, and I'm just telling you, if they took half of the mental health budget and gave it to the black and brown community, to responsible people who are willing to educate and, and teach morals and stuff, I'm telling you, these communities would change overnight. But mm -hmm. that's not the idea. The idea is to make the rich richer and the poor poor and then the rich get money off the poor and they set up these systems and they say we're going to help you but they don't mm -hmm. and there it is and there it is and 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 you know i could i mean look at our museum and you probably even saw it uh where they were where psychiatry said that blacks hispanics and native americans should never be allowed to even have children mm -hmm. you know we have the documentation on that mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's like, why would you even, why would you, if you were a mental health professional, if you were supposed to be an expert in the art of living, why is it that you would say races should not even be allowed to have children? Exactly. So these people are not our friends. Absolutely and, and, not. And I'm not against mental health, like I said, but I am against mental control. I am against psychiatric abuse. I am against those things that make the communities not responsible for their condition. If they say that I, look, I cheat on my wife the first time she forgives me. I cheat her on again, she's about to leave. I get on my knees, I beg, baby, don't leave me. Do all of this stuff, okay. Mm -hmm. The third time I go down and they say, oh, he's a sex addict. Well, if I was a sex addict, why don't I do it in her face if I can't, mm -hmm. if I can't control it? You mm -hmm. see, I mean, if you look, you take a, 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 a heroin addict or a crack addict, they will disappear on you and be gone for days feeding that habit. They don't care. Well, that's not the same way with necessarily sex addicts mm -hmm. and stuff. But, but they put it and they treat it all the same. And right. then they even put another, they, then they put another trick in on us. They make us believe that all of the mental stuff operate like the physical stuff with medical doctors. Mm -hmm. So then they talk about genetic, mental illness. They talk about this and, and, it's, and it's all people's opinions. Mm -hmm. It's not based on anything. If I go to Africa, they take my blood. They say, Mr. Shaw, do you know that you're diabetic? I go to Mexico, Mr. Shaw, uh, it looks like you're a diabetic. But you can go to different psychiatric doctors, get totally different diagnosis for the same exact thing and be put on totally different medication. Because mm -hmm. there's no science to it. Exactly. Well, uh, we have come to the end of our time, so let's uh, do the uh, Q and A for um, for our listeners. So, I wanted to ask: Do you have any questions or comments that you would like to like to ask about Hispanic Lives Matter or HLM or about what we represent? Uh, 
what we do. Are, are you referring that I can ask you or as an audience? Yeah, yeah, you could. Ask? No, you oh. could ask me. You could ask me. Oh, okay. Well, um, I actually don't have a question about it. I, I mean, I've, I've been around long enough to know what civil and human rights groups do. I think it's admirable that, that you, as a young person, uh, would take up this call because the fact is, is that I had a very interesting talk with a young black man when they were rioting in Baltimore. I think it was the Freddie Gray killing or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, do you think this is the way it should be handled? And the young man looked at me and he said, with all due respect, when you guys handle, had it, you didn't get it handled. Now it's our turn to deal with it. So I am applauding young people like yourself who are willing to step up and take that responsibility and say, hey, I'm going to make a difference. This show, what you're doing standing up for the Hispanic, and we should all be standing up for ourselves as way of standing together, as well as standing together. I just want to say I, I commend you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. That, that really means that really means a lot. <laughs> And uh, like I said, uh, my whole purpose is to advocate, to educate, and to uh, change different methods. It's like, unlike other groups, uh, we, don't, we don't protest, we don't go out into the streets. Like what we do is that uh, we, we boycott businesses, we sign, we sign petitions, we contact uh, local leaders. Uh, that's, you know, we use everything through the legal process because the things of the past, of uh, going out into the streets or whatever, unfortunately, today, and then this is just my personal opinion, I think it, it can be very counter, counterproductive. And I think that if the, if the Hispanic community were to um, stand up, but do it the right way, you know, by going to the legal process, I think they could do a lot more good than just going onto the street and, and riot. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, is I would like to see the two groups come together, uh, not Black Lives Matter and Hispanic Lives Matter, but your group, Hispanic Lives Matter, and NAACP and the National Action Network. There's a lot of civil rights groups out here that would more than willing to be joining forces to fight for legislation to help best, uh, both parties. What has happened in America is we've gotten so diluted and everything is split. You know, you, you, you are separating the women from the men. You, uh, you, you're, you're separating the gay from the straight. You're separating this from that. You're breaking everybody up. And so nobody singly has the power to make change. But mm -hmm. if we unify, we can make a lot of change. And that, that's something that I would like to see happen. And CCHR would love to, to be able to spread our information through you. The NAACP, at least the Inglewood South Bay Branch, would love to be able to partnership with you. There's a lot that we could do together to make it better for all of us. Awesome, awesome. And I would also like to give my, my methods and ways that we could, like, again, I mentioned the Asian community as an example that we could take their methods of doing things in their communities and how they've been able to be successful and then implement it and adapt it to our own communities. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, they have proven it to be successful. Uh, their community, the Jewish community, uh, there's a lot of people or groups that we could pretty much emulate instead of hate that could help us with our problems. We need to start looking at this from a different perspective. The government is supposed to be us. So exactly. if they're not representing us, then we have to represent ourselves. Exactly. Abs abs absolutely. I definitely agree with you. So again, thank you very much for your time for doing the conference call. And um, I'm going to upload the uh, video later on tonight. So I will send you a link so you can go check it out. And uh, we will definitely keep in touch. That way we could work together with different movements to see what we, what we could do to improve our, our communities.
absolutely. And issues like the mental health issue, education, we most definitely should be able to stand together on those type of things. Absolutely. So it was, it was a pleasure meeting you, Dr. Shaw, and we will definitely keep in touch. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you so much. Have, you, have yourself a good afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.